Welcome to Beyond the Pages. Join us as we embark on a journey through time and wisdom while we unpack Bible stories together. Welcome to another episode of Beyond the Pages. We are so excited that you're here with us today. And we are also very excited to share that with every episode that we release, we are also offering study guides for each of the different characters that we're talking about. So the first episode we spoke about was the prodigal son. And so if you go to the show notes, there's a link there to our web page and there you can download a study guide for each of those characters Mm -hmm. for uh, the prodigal son the prodigal son's father and the prodigal Mm -hmm. son's brother last week we spoke about Zacchaeus Mm -hmm. and so you can go there and also download a study guide for Zacchaeus and I think that's just so exciting exciting if you want to dig deeper on those stories Today, we have a very exciting story. That's the story of Cain and Abel. And this story serves as a cautionary tale, emphasizing the importance of controlling our emotions, resolving conflicts peacefully, and being responsible for our choices. But it also serves as an example of faith, obedience, and the consequences of jealousy and violence. It teaches us about the importance of making offerings to God with sincerity and having a heart that is aligned with faith and righteousness. And this story is found in the first book of the Bible. That's Genesis 4, and Debbie's going to read Genesis 4, 2 to 16. Later, she gave birth to his brother Abel. Now Abel kept the flocks and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering, fat portions of some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering. But Cain and his offering did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry, and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you so angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, and you must rule over it. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, Let's go out to the field. While they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? I don't know, he replied. Am I my brother's keeper? The Lord said, What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you are under a curse and driven from the ground, which is open which is open his mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground it will be it will no longer yield its crop, crops to you. You will be a restless wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is more than I can bear. Today you are driving me from the land, and I will be hidden from your presence. I will be a restless wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. But the Lord said to him, Not so. Anyone who kills Cain will suffer vengeance seven times over. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain so that no one who found him would kill him. So Cain went out from the Lord's presence and lived in the land of Nod, east of Eden. So right off the bat, this is a very dramatic and sad story, right? But let's start at the very beginning. We have two brothers, Mm -hmm. Cain and Abel. Cain is the older brother and Mm -hmm. Abel is a younger brother. Now, with siblings, (laughs) there always comes this certain rivalry, right? Now you have a younger brother. Yeah. How's your relationship with your brother? Sometimes um, we're like, sometimes we'll play whatever, but sometimes we would get mad. So, but I feel like this story is, I don't, I think that's wrong. And he, like he killed his brother. Okay, let's go back for a minute. (laughs) So, we're talking about two brothers and with siblings. And I, I know with you and your brother, sometimes 
when you're playing sports or if you're playing a game, do you always want to win? Yes. Right? With brothers, you there's this competitiveness, mm -hmm. right? You always want to try to outbeat, right? Or beat each other or run faster, um, jump higher, mm -hmm. beat them at the game, right? That's part of being siblings. Yeah. That's, that's normal part of being brother and sister, right? You mess with each other, you get on each other's nerves, right? Yeah. But you're right. This goes even further than mm -hmm. that. And so the Bible says that Cain had a job and Abel also had a different job. They, they each had their own specific but separate jobs. What was Cain's job? Cain worked um, like gardening. The fields. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about Abel? Abel kept like the sheep and the livestock. Okay. And each of them brought an offering to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about Cain's offering. What did he bring? What does the Bible say that he brought? He, he brought some of the fruits um, that I guess he grew to an offering. Okay, because he worked the soil. So the Bible says that he brought some of the fruits of the soil as mm -hmm. an offering to the Lord. So he brought an offering. Mm -hmm. Okay, how about Abel? Abel, it says in verse 4, um, Abel also brought an offering. But um, you see in verse 3, it says Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil. Not like, he doesn't say some like juicy, bright colored fruits. In verse 4, it says that Abel brought an offering of fat por fat portions from son of the firstborn of his flock. Okay, so let's establish from the beginning that they both brought offerings. Mm -hmm. Now, they each brought an offering from what they were good at. Yeah. Right? Cain brought from the land, from the soil, mm -hmm. and Abel brought from... From like the the sheep, the okay. firstborn. Okay. But you're right. It says that Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil. Mm -hmm. But in verse 4, it says that Abel brought fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. Mm -hmm. Now, what's the difference between those two offerings? Well, um, like... Cain's offering was just some fruits of the soil. They're probably like leftovers or maybe not the prettiest or the juiciest that he had. But Abel's was fat portions from some of, some of the firstborn of his flock. So, so it looks like Cain brought offering because maybe he had to and he mm -hmm. just grabbed whatever and brought it. But it appears that Abel put thought into his offering mm -hmm. and brought the very best of yeah. what he had because it said that he brought fat portions from some of the firstborn mm -hmm. of his flock. And usually the firstborns were the best, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So they each brought their offerings. And how did God accept each of their offerings? It said um, in the second part of verse 4, the Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. Now, why do you think that they both brought offerings? Mm -hmm. They both brought something to the Lord. Why would the Lord not look with favor on Cain's offering? Well, I think that Cain, he brought, like you said, like just whatever was like left, like he was like, oh my goodness, like I have to do an offering. Let's just grab this, grab that. We'll make something with it. Out of duty, mm -hmm. just because he, to get it out of the way. Yeah. But Abel put thought into mm -hmm. his offering and brought the very best. So God looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering, he did not look on with favor. So what happened with Cain? Um, Cain got angry because the Lord didn't like, it's not that he didn't like it. He was just like, you could have done better. Like he didn't look with favor. 
And so Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. That means he was sad. He realized that God was pleased with Abel's offering and mm-hmm. he wasn't pleased with his own. So he, he, disappointed. Was, he was disappointed. He was sad. And God noticed mm-hmm. that Cain was sad. And what did the Lord say to Cain? In verse 6, he says, Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? Uh, Can you keep reading verse 7? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door and it desires to have you, but you must rule over it. So the Lord comes to Cain and he says, Why are you angry? Why are you sad? You do know that if you do what's right, then everything is going to be fine. Mm -hmm. And what was the right thing that he should have done? He should have um, taken time to pick out what he was going to give and maybe given the best that he had instead of just um, like, instead of like, like taking time to go get it and... um, to get the best instead of just gathering the leftovers. And the Lord says, but if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. Now this sentence, sin is crouching at your door. What do you think that means? I think it means that like sin is right there. If you open it, like he's gonna come. Like, if you let him in, then he's going to take advantage and he's going to come. But if you leave him out, then you can, like, God is the door. So he's, like, stopping um, He's stopping sin from getting to you. So I think this is so powerful to show that God saw Cain. He realized that Cain was starting to have these feelings of anger. Yeah. Of disappointment and he warns him and he says listen what's going on why are you angry yeah if you do what is right everything's going to be okay be Mm -hmm. careful so he's giving him a warning Mm -hmm. he says be careful because sin is crouching at your door sin is just waiting for you to open the door just a little bit so that he can can come in. in right and take over and It says, it desires to have you, but you must rule over it. Now, let's pretend that we don't know what happens after this. Let's pretend we haven't read the rest of the story. What do you think would have happened if Cain would have stopped and said, you know what, Lord, you're right. I'm angry and I'm disappointed because you found favor in my brother and not in my offering. But... I am going to go out in the field, in the soil, and I'm going to bring the very best. And he would have gone out, brought a basket full of just wonderful stuff and presented it to the Lord. Mm -hmm. What do you think would have happened? I think he would have like, um, the Lord would have been pleased. And I don't think Cain, I don't think his feelings would have gone over him and controlled him. I think that the door. Yeah. Would have would stayed, have stayed shut. And sin wouldn't have any chance to get in. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, that's not what happened. What happened? He he called Abel to the field and he said, he was like, come on, like, let's go. And then he kills his brother. So Cain not only opened the door just a little bit, he opened it wide open Mm -hmm. because sin was crouching at the door. Mm -hmm. Sin came in so much so that he eventually ended up killing Mm -hmm. his brother. I mean, the worst that could have happened happened because he let anger and jealousy take over. Mm -hmm. And... I don't know what was going on in his mind. Maybe mm-hmm. he thought this was the only way out. This is, but but he chose the wrong the wrong thing. Yeah. And did God 
realize what happened? Yeah, he knew. He was like, um, in verse 9, it said, Then the Lord say, said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? He said, like, I don't know. Like, am I, am I supposed to, like, be watching him? Like, why are you asking me? Right. And so the Bible then talks about the fact that when the Lord says, what have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. It later, it sounds like Cain was, you know, he, he felt regret mm -hmm. about what happened. He's like, wait, oh no, like, what did I do? Uh huh. But unfortunately, it was too late. Now, we've talked about Cain, right? And, and all the bad choices that he did. But what about Abel? Can we talk about Abel and his sacrifice that he brought to the Lord? Can you tell me a little bit more about that? He, well, he brought the, he brought like the firstborn, he brought the fattened, um, like sheep or whatever he brought and he brought it and the Lord was pleased. So I wonder what was going on in his head when Cain said, let's go out to the field. Like when my brother tells me, okay, let's go play outside. I don't think he's going to kill me. Right. Or I don't think I want to kill him. I wonder if the Bible doesn't say when they brought their sacrifices, whether they oh, yeah, brought them was, at the same uh -huh. time and whether Abel knew that God wasn't pleased with his uh -huh. brother's sacrifice. And so I wonder if... Abel even knew that Cain was upset or angry. Yeah. Maybe he, maybe he knew, but maybe he didn't. The Bible doesn't say, mm -hmm. right? But in Abel's heart, it appears that all he wanted was to please God and to be faithful and to be obedient. Mm -hmm. And you can tell that by the type of offering that he brought. Yeah. And in this case, Abel suffered something that was beyond his control. He was mm -hmm. killed and there was no good reason for it. Yeah. It was out of his brother's anger and jealousy and Abel was just bringing the best that he had. Mm -hmm. But you're right. I wonder what was going on through Abel's head when Cain says, let's go out to the fields. Yeah. If he didn't know, maybe he thought, okay, we're just going to go out and, and talk. Mm -hmm. But he ended up being the victim of his brother's sin yeah. that crouched at his door. I wonder um, if it was like in the morning when they went to give their sacrifices. I'm assuming it was in the morning. But maybe like if he said like, let's go out to the field. And I don't know. I don't know if it says, um, I'm trying to find it, but I don't know. I don't think it says maybe they didn't go to the field right after maybe like a couple hours after, right after. So maybe it was like nighttime, maybe it was um, the next day in the morning, maybe it was in the afternoon. But if it was nighttime, like going out in the field where nobody's going to see you in the dark with this guy who's mad. <laughs> right, right. Now, Cain, when he was talking to the Lord, he was afraid, right, that the Lord was going to send him out and somebody was probably going to kill him. Yeah. But I think even then, God had mercy on Cain, mm -hmm. right? And I think it shows, you know, sometimes as humans, we make the wrong choices. Yeah. And we choose the wrong path. And even then, God has mercy. Yeah. On, on our lives. And sometimes things happen to us that we don't understand. Mm -hmm. Why would something so awful happen to someone so nice yeah. and obedient and faithful like Abel? Mm -hmm. And sometimes we don't have the answer to those questions. But what we do know is that God is a good father and that he is merciful and that he has a plan for each one of our lives right mm -hmm. now let me ask you this have you ever felt jealousy yes can you give us an example like 
maybe um, my brother new like um, gets a new skill that I don't have. Okay. And so I would like try to get it, but I can't get it. Like what? Like, like soccer? Yeah. Okay. So say your brother is good at soccer mm -hmm. and you see that he's getting really good. And how does that, how does that play out in your mind? I just like try to get better at it, but I feel like all of us sometimes have these thoughts like, oh, dang it. Like, I wish I could just like, I wish I could do it instead of my brother. I wish I had that skill. I like jealousy. Yeah. How about anger? Maybe you get angry that like, I don't have this skill. Why haven't, why hasn't God given me the skill? Um, and you just like start getting mad. And that's where sin comes in, right? Mm -hmm. And because like you said in the very beginning, sin is there just waiting to, for us to open the door or for us to give it an opportunity to come in. Mm -hmm. And sin sometimes doesn't start big, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes sin starts very little. Yeah. with just a little emotion, something in your heart, right? Maybe you see that your brother got a toy that, wait, I didn't get a toy mm -hmm. or I didn't, how come he has that and I don't? And little by little, something happens in your heart, right? Mm -hmm. You start feeling a little bit of jealousy, maybe a little bit of anger. Mm -hmm. And what happens if you don't deal with that? What do you think would happen? then it can like get over you and it can um, take over. Like take over your feelings and control you. And like, then you start, like once it controls you, then you can start like showing your emotions and then you can start, um, like then sin is like controlling your life and then it starts showing. Right, because even though maybe that jealousy or that anger is just a little emotion that you feel in your mind, in your heart. Yeah. If you let it, little by little, that starts growing and growing yeah. and growing. And then it's not just jealousy and anger. Maybe then it turns into hate. Yeah. Right now. And now you hate your brother because he gets mm -hmm. stuff that you don't. Or you hate your brother because he's better at that than you are. Mm -hmm. And so we have to be so careful when it comes to controlling our emotions or when it comes to making sure that sin, we're not allowing sin to come inside the door. Now, how do you think that the Holy Spirit helps us to deal with this when our emotions are growing little by little? or sin is just there crouching at the door? I think it's the one trying to keep us from opening the door. And I think it's the one like trying to like protect us from opening the door and to help us like control our feelings. What do you think would help you in a situation where you're starting to feel a little bit of jealousy and anger, maybe. And, and we keep saying your brother because he's your brother. He's yeah. your only brother. But what do you think would help if you start having those feelings? How do you think the Lord can help you in that situation? Maybe he can help me think of a different way to express it or helping me like have self-control and helping me deal with it. Right. And the Bible says that the Holy Spirit is there to guide us in our path. And when Jesus left, he left the Holy Spirit because he knew that here in this world, we were going to have trouble. Yeah. And we were going to wrestle with sin and we were going to deal with those things. Mm -hmm. Right. And so when we start to feel like, okay, I'm feeling this. I don't, this is not okay. I'm starting yeah. to feel jealous or angry or whatever the case may be. I think that it's important for us to, we can't do it on our own. Yeah. That's where we need Jesus. That's where we need the Holy Spirit. 
And we need to say, okay, Lord, yeah, this is what's happening to me. I feel this way. Help me, guide me. Mm -hmm. In Galatians 5, 22 to 26, um, it talks about the fruit of the spirit. And it says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. It says, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Mm -hmm. So this story, it, it, it's a, to me, it's a sad story mm -hmm. because you have one person that let sin come in and completely take over yeah and then one like innocent little i don't know how old they were mm -hmm. but an innocent younger brother who he hadn't done anything wrong he just brought his best he was humble and then he just like suffered the consequence mm -hmm. of his brother's actions mm -hmm. but i i don't want to leave us with that i want us to remember that God is a God of mercy. Yeah. And just as God came and confronted Cain and warned him, mm -hmm. right? And said, listen, why are you sad? You can change this. You have the power through me yeah. to take control. And that's the same thing that God does with you and with me, right? He's a merciful father, just like with the prodigal son. He's waiting with open arms to take us back. And he's given us the Holy Spirit so that he can help us and guide us yeah. and control those emotions and keep sin at bay, but we have to reach out to him. Right. And so this is just a reminder that, yes, we do struggle with sin. We struggle with bad thoughts, but God is always, always there just waiting for us to call out to him. Thank you for listening to Beyond the Pages. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends and make sure to hit the subscribe button. Until next time, stay curious and keep those conversations going because every story is an adventure waiting to be explored.